Good morning, church. Good morning. Woo! It's wonderful to see you all here today as we celebrate our Welcome Home Sunday. This is going to be a wonderful day. We've got worship right now. We've got food. We've got fellowship. We've got games and activities uh, during that time after worship. Uh, after we eat, we're going to you know, head right over. We'll say grace, uh, sit down, grab some food, and eat. And after that, we have a special surprise. So after you eat, do not disappear. We're going to have a very fun event. There's going to be tons of good stuff to do today, uh, just as a big welcome home. So we are so glad everybody could be here today, that we could celebrate, and it's going to be a wonderful, wonderful day. I want to invite up John and Karen Schmidt. They're going to tell us more about Crop Walk this year. Uh, we've got... It's, it's, it's still back, but they're going to give us more details of how that's going to work and what's going on. Uh-oh. Hello. Is it, is it on? Is it on? No. I might have put the battery in backwards. <laughs> it's always strictly possible. Was it good? Oops. Ooh, there it went. Okie doke. Are we on? Yep. Welcome back, Church of the Cross family. Woohoo! Hey. <laughs> it's really great seeing so many smiling faces here in the sanctuary. Greetings also to everybody who is joining us virtually. We are grateful for this opportunity to get you all pumped up for the <laughs> annual Erie Crop Hunger Walk. Before we begin our pep talk, here is a brief psychological test. <laughs> I'm going to say a word, and I want each of you to think of the first word that pops into your mind. Now, your word can come before or after the word that I name. For example, if I say the word Drew, awesome. you might think of Drew Himes, oh. or maybe you thought of Mountain Drew. <laughs> Whoops, that should be, that's Mountain Dew. Um, but you get the idea, right? So do your best to go with the first thing that pops into your mind. Keep it in your head. Don't call it out. So remember your response for each of the six stimulus words. Here we go. Corn. Wheat. Sour. Dement. Dement. Puff, land. So what did you come up with for each word? Shout out your answers for corn, bread, wheat, bread, sour, no. dement, Jim, <laughs> cream, <laughs> dement, puff, rice, land, oh lakes. <laughs> so let's see if you were able to match our response to each stimulus word. Hint, our word is the same every time. Cream corn, cream of wheat, sour cream, cream de mint, cream puff, and cream land. Do you remember this little ditty? I scream, you scream, we all, all scream, scream for, for ice, ice cream. cream. That's right, friends. The word is cream. Why cream, you might ask? Because the 2020 Erie County Crop Hunger Walk was honored as being part of the cream of the crop. Our virtual walk last fall raised almost $58,000, which ranked number 12 in the entire United States and number one in Pennsylvania. And once again, Church of the Cross was the top fundraiser for the Erie Walk with a total of $10,186. 25% of all money raised... 25% of all money raised in the Erie Walk is, was distributed last spring to 21 local food agencies. How did this happen despite the pandemic last year? The answer is simple. Lots of churches like ours and lots of people like us. Our Lord has called us to feed the hungry. And at Church of the Cross, our mission is to be the hands and feet of Christ. So we walk and we give year after year. The first Erie Crop Walk took place 46 years ago, and our former pastor, Jim McCormick, grew the event 
when he took over its leadership in 1979. Our church has been a major factor in the success of the crop walk ever since. We think this is our 40th year walking. Any of you walk um, 40 years or more? Because we missed the first couple. Um, enough of the history lesson. It is time to celebrate. And some of you will undoubtedly remember some celebrations and cheers from past years. So let's review. Uh, the truck driver cheer. Honk, honk. honk. Good, good job, job good, good buddy. buddy. All right, your turn. Ready? Honk, honk. 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 Good, good job, job good, good buddy. buddy. The fantastic cheer. Get your fantastic spray bottles. Three squirts. Ch -ch -ch. Fantastic. <laughs> the, uh, oh, the hamburger celebration. Karen will demonstrate for you. If you remember, join in. Ch -ch -ch. Well, well done. done. Let's put a little cheese on that burger. The cheese grater. Get your cheese and your grater. You did great, great, great. great, great. great. <laughs> and who could ever forget the Himes ketchup clap? Your bottle. So what new celebration do we have for you this year? We actually invented a new one, the cow cheer, which involves milking a cow and may not have been appropriate or good for our job security. So let's play it safe and do the ice cream cheer. It goes, I scream, you scream, we all scream, we are the cream. Okay, are you guys ready? I scream, you scream, we all scream, we are the cream. Great job with that cream cheer. To show our appreciation, pick up a cream filled cow tail after worship because you guys are really the cream of the crop. Please stand up if you have already uh, signed up to be a part of our walk team this year. Stand up. Crop walkers, look around. Those are your walkers. Give them a round of applause. Thank you. Currently, we have uh, 19 walkers representing 13 families this year, and we could definitely use some more. Um, uh, please raise your hand if you have signed up to sponsor one or more of our walkers. We thank you. And uh, those of you that have not had a chance to see one of the people who are, um, who are walking. The, uh, still plenty of time to sign up as either a walker or a sponsor. The walk is two weeks from today, Sunday, September 26th, Beach One. There are options for a one, a three, and a five mile course. Of course, the top fundraiser will again receive the prestigious Red Sneaker Award. We had a tie last year with both Mary Jane Dillon and Sue and Jim Orne raising just over $1,000 each. Remember that crop allows us an opportunity to walk, give, and change the world. Thank you. Friends, this day we are remembering, we're celebrating our coming back together. We'll hear from the, the prophet Ezra later on in our service as we think about the time when the Israelites came home. And the whole point was rejoicing. So this day, I hope we lift up our hearts in rejoicing, being together, being the people of God. Friends, let us pray. Almighty God, you call your church to witness that in Christ we are reconciled to you. Help us so to proclaim the good news of your love that all who hear it may turn to you through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 19. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims His handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from his wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. 
It's rising from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them. And nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous together. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear from me hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Friends, let's stand and join our voices together in our opening two songs this morning. Come, now is the time to worship, and then 10,000 reasons. Thank you. 
disciples like to come forward at this time? Oh, lost a tire. So in just a minute, we're going to hear a story. Mr. Jim's going to read some of it, and I'm going to read some of it, of a time when God's special people who were called Israel, when they finally got to come home from a very, very long trip. They were taken far, far away to a country that was not theirs, and then they had to stay there for 50 long years, and they finally got to come home again. And when they got home again... What do you think they did? What do you think? Celebrated. They celebrated. That's right. And do you know how they celebrated? What do you think? What would you do to celebrate? God. They celebrated God. That's right. That's exactly right. They worshipped God. Anything else you think they maybe did to celebrate? Well, they did something really fun. They let out a great shout. Does anybody want to help me let out a great shout? We're going to say, what do you want to say in your shout? How about woohoo? Can we try that? Can you guys say woohoo? Woohoo. Woo All right, now we got to let it out as a great shout, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Woohoo! Right. God's special people, when they got home again, they let out a great shout while they were celebrating God. And they, we don't know exactly what they yelled, but we could guess maybe it was woohoo, right? So let's try that again. One, two, three. Woohoo! 
All right, now we've got to stand up. We've got to get all the people of God to give out a great shout. All right? So you all ready? You know how to say woohoo? Okay. One, two, three. Woohoo! Right? The people gave out a great shout because they were so happy to be home again with their family and their friends and in the place that they knew the best. So let's pray to God and say thank you as part of our celebration. Let's pray. God, on this day, we say woohoo because you have brought us home again. Just like you brought home your special people all those years ago and they gave you a great shout, we give a great shout with our voices, with our hearts, and with every single part of us. We are so glad and thankful this day, oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Go ahead and head on back. We have a, a bell solo this morning. Joyful, joyful. What that? It's a duet. My apologies. Joyful, joyful. This morning I'm going to be reading from the book of Ezra, chapter 1, verses 1 through 11. Pastor Judy did not tell me about all the big names in here, 
so. <clears throat> you should see the third chapter. <clears throat> well, at least the guy's a treasurer. Okay. So, you know. <clears throat> let's, hear your, let's hear God's word. In the first year of King Cyrus of Persia, in order that the word of the Lord by the mouth of Jeremiah might be accomplished, the Lord stirred up the spirit of King Cyrus of Persia, so that he sent an herald, a herald throughout all of his kingdom, and also in a written edict declared. Thus says King Cyrus of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth, and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem in Judah. Any of those among you who are of his people, may their God be with them, are now permitted to go up to Jerusalem and Judah and rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. And let all the survivors in whatever place they reside be assisted by the people of their place with silver and gold, with goods and with animals besides free will offerings for the house of God in Jerusalem. <clears throat> The heads of the families of Judah and Benjamin and the priests and the Levites, everyone whose spirit God had stirred, got ready to go up and rebuild the house of the Lord in Jerusalem. All their neighbors aided them with silver vessels, with gold, with goods, with animals, and with valuable gifts besides all that was freely offered. King Cyrus himself brought out the vessels of the house of the Lord that Nebuchadnezzar had carried away from Jerusalem and placed in the house of his gods. King Cyrus of Persia had them released into the charge of Methrodas, the treasurer, who counted down them out to Shezbazar, the prince of Judah. And this was the inventory. Gold basins, 30. Silver basins, 1,000. Knives, 29. Gold bowls, 30. Other silver bowls, 410. Other vessels, 1,000. The total of the gold and silver vessels was 5,400. All these Shez Bazaar brought up when the exiles were brought up from Babylonia to Jerusalem. I did notice in there, Mr. Warren, there was no audit made to make sure that their numbers were correct. So they haven't, haven't followed pure... F noted that. You noted that, yes. Our second scripture lesson is Ezra chapter 3, verses 1 to 11. When the seventh month came and the Israelites were in the towns, the people gathered together in Jerusalem. Then Yeshua, son of Jehozadak, with his fellow priests, and Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, with his kin, set out to build the altar of the God of Israel, to offer burnt offerings on it, as prescribed in the law of Moses, the man of God. They set up the altar on its foundation because they were in dread of the neighboring peoples, and they offered burnt offerings upon it to the Lord morning and evening. And they kept the festival of booths as prescribed and offered the daily burnt offerings by number, according to the ordinance as required for each day. And after that, regular, after that, the regular burnt offerings, the offerings at the new moon and at all the sacred festivals of the Lord and the offerings of everyone who made a free will offering to the Lord. From the first day of the seventh month, they began to offer burnt offerings to the Lord. But the foundation of the temple of the Lord was not yet laid. So they gave money to the masons and the carpenters and food and drink and oil to the Sidonians and the Tyrians to bring cedar trees from Lebanon to the sea to Joppa according to the grant that they had from King Cyrus of Persia. In the second year after their arrival at the house of God at Jerusalem, in the second month, Zerubbabel son of Shealtiel and Yeshua son of Jehozadak made a beginning together with the rest of their people, the priests and the Levites, and all who had come to Jerusalem from the captivity. They appointed the Levites from 20 years old and upward to have the oversight of the work of the, on the house of the Lord. And Yeshua with his sons and his kin, and Kadmiel and his sons Binwi and Hodavia, along with the sons of Hinadad, the Levites, their sons and kin, together took charge of the workers in the house of God. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, 
The priests in their vestments were stationed to praise the Lord with trumpets, and the Levites, the son of Asaph, with cymbals, according to the directions of King David of Israel. And they sang responsively, praising and giving thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever toward Israel. And all the people responded with a great shout when they praised the Lord, because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. Friends, our choir is now going to lead us in a great shout of their own. While the choir is getting situated, I just want to uh, welcome, we have, a, we have a guest singer with us today, uh, so please uh, welcome Elizabeth. Thank you for being with us today. Um, I also would like to invite you all to our choir open house is this Thursday at six o'clock in the evening right here in the sanctuary. So if you want to come and hang out with us, if you want to come and listen, if you want to come and sing, if you want to just come and see what the choir does on a week to week basis, you know what, what it's all about. Uh, if you're curious, come and join us. Um, we'd love to have you, and there there may be some treats as well. So we we hope you'll come and see us on Thursday night at six o'clock. The piece we're going to sing for you today is called A Psalm, and it is by Andy Beck. I hope you enjoy. with praise. 
Did anybody notice Sarah's so good she was able to direct and play the piano at the same time? She did it with her mind. It's like a Jedi mind trick. <laughs> Friends, would you join me in prayer for just a moment? Lord, speak to these people whom you love through your most imperfect vessel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I've never lived in exile for 50 years, but a few years ago, if you remember, I was able to take a trip to France. Now, I took that trip voluntarily. I was not forced to go, but I took that trip voluntarily. And it was wonderful, and I got to see and I got to meet a whole host of people from really around the world, uh, people from Germany and from France. There were people there from Brazil and Portugal, people from South Korea and China. There were people from all over the world, and I got to experience French culture and French food, which is fantastic. Uh, but I got to experience that whole thing. But after 10 days, I was happy to come home again. French people can be a little bit... Mm, snobby. <laughs> Americans can be snobby, but in our own sort of way. The French are directly snobby. Americans are a little bit more passive aggressive in our snobbiness. But I felt good to come home again and to experience the things that I knew, to recognize all the people and to fully understand what everybody around me was saying. I speak a little bit of French, not enough, just mostly enough to order food and not get my face slapped. But that's about it. But it felt so good when we crossed over out of Canada because we'd flown out of Toronto. To, when we crossed into the United States, I was like, oh, finally, it makes sense again. There's a, there's a story here that I know and I understand. It's part of my own story. It's where I'm from. So I can't even imagine what it would have felt like for the Israelites to hear this edict coming from yet another foreign king. They would have seen everything happening around them in those days. Remember, they had been taken away from Israel, from the land that had been promised to them. They'd been carried away by Nebuchadnezzar and the Babylonians. They were put in captivity. Some of them ran for their lives to other countries. Some of them were just simply killed and left in the land. And a few of them did remain behind. But to be carried away to a foreign land with all of its customs and its language and its religion of the day and that they were controlling you. And the people were there for 50 years, which means a lot of them never came home. And there were people who were born during the captivity who had never known what Israel looked like. But on that day when this edict goes out, because again, they would have known basically that there was something going on in that country. They would have known that the Persians who wanted to control Babylon and most of the world were marching in and taking over and pushing the Babylonian control to the side and they were controlling it. Imagine if you had been stolen away to Babylon and then all of a sudden this new king comes in. What would you think? God, he could be worse. I don't know how he could be worse, but he certainly could be worse because at least Nebuchadnezzar did allow the Israelites to have a day of Sabbath. He did respect their religion enough to say, yes, one day a week you do not have to work if that's what your religion says. They might have been thinking to themselves, oh man, how bad could this guy be? And then all of a sudden they get this edict and the edict says, you're free. You can go home again. I have no qualms with you. You may go home now. And not even just that, but Cyrus the Great, Cyrus the Persian says, may your God, and Cyrus had his own gods, may your God, Yahweh the Lord, be honored in your going home. Go home and build the house of your God. And may you go and praise that God. I even give some praise, Cyrus is saying, to that God who is the God who created all this stuff. That's an interesting statement for a guy who doesn't believe in that religion. But he says, go home. Go and worship your God. You know what? Get some help. We're going to get you some help here. All this stuff that's yours, that Nebuchadnezzar stole from you, you can have it all back. That doesn't make sense for an invading king. Because when an invading king comes in, they want to steal all the bounty. And they don't care whose it is. They just want all the money and all the power and the influence. 
But here we have Cyrus saying, look, this stuff's yours. This stuff belongs in the house of your God. So, so take it. It's yours. Use it as a, a down payment on rebuilding things. How much in disbelief would you be that this king, this invading king has said, go home and take your stuff with you. Go and worship your God. You might be a little gun shy. You might be a little scared that there's some strings attached to all of this. That as soon as you turn your back on that king, he's going to have you mowed down in the streets. But that's not what happened. Cyrus helped them get home. Cyrus gave them safe passage because he controlled that whole region. So his army was in charge of making sure that they could all get back safely. And they did. And we hear then in Ezra 3, what happens when they actually get home. Imagine you had survived. Maybe you were very young when the exile took place. And now you're home again. You have some fuzzy memories of where you grew up. You have some fuzzy memories of what things used to look like and used to be like. But now you're back. You ever go back to your hometown after an extremely extended period of time? We just did that. I was talking a few weeks ago about going back to see my parents. Man, nothing's the same. I don't recognize anything. Well, the high school I recognize, it's still leaning to the left. <sighs> Thing was built a thousand years ago, and it's cracked. Anyway. But the old grocery store is not a grocery store. It's a Dollar General now. The pizza shop, which was this run-down ramshackle building, that had the greatest, greasiest pizza in the world is now the Vienna Ale House. When did we become like highbrow in this town? But imagine that feeling if you'd been little and you went back and went, whoa. And the only thing that, you, that is left for you to see are, are burnt hulks and, and stones that have been turned over and, and your house isn't there anymore and the places that you know best aren't even there. And yet it was an occasion of rejoicing. It was an occasion for the people to get back together, even though the temple wasn't reconstructed yet. It tells us in the text, even the foundation, the bottom of it, hadn't even been laid yet. But this was an entire time of celebration. The priests got up there and led the people in worship, and they sang songs, and they offered offerings, just like they had always done. And the people are so overwhelmed. Imagine the emotion of that moment when you see once again things are, quote, normal. Text tells us that they let out a great shout. It doesn't define that shout for us. It doesn't tell us what they say. And I think that's a beautiful way for the text to leave it open to our heads. Because some people may have shouted things like, praise God. Some people may have just made noise because they were so overwhelmed by the emotion of the moment. How did you feel? If you haven't been here in a while, how did you feel walking in? How did you feel seeing those people that you haven't seen in quite a while? How did you feel deep in your soul? How did it feel when the people who came to Sunday school, how did it feel to be back in the place where we always had Sunday school? How does it feel to be back amongst the family of God's people? There are feelings we can't describe and we shouldn't even try. We leave them to be what they are. We let out the guttural noise that it is because that's all we can muster in itself. It is poetry. And poetry can't be explained. It just is. And we're here, and we're hearing things, and, and the bells are ringing, and the choir is singing. We're all singing together. We're hearing scripture, and we're joining together. And Boy, it feels a, a little bit normal. But of course, it isn't yet. Maybe it never will be again. Maybe, maybe our lives were never normal. I, I know my life's not normal, but... Maybe they weren't. Maybe we're, we're questing after something that never even existed in the first place. You think for the Israelites, they, they've come back from this 50-year sojourn out in, in Babylon, and 
it's kind of normal, but, it, but, it, but it's not really uh, completely normal. And, and the temple's not built yet. And, you know, just around the corner from this story, you, you know what happens? The Romans show up. It's not long after we hear the story, maybe a couple of hundred years after we hear this story, that the Romans show up and now they're in charge. And they're going to be in charge for a good long time. So what they thought was normal, what they assumed to be normal, wasn't completely normal. But there was some kind of familiarity, even in the midst of all of that topsy-turviness of their lives. There were things that they could ground themselves in. Even though the, the temple wasn't established in a couple of hundred years, a new invading kingdom was going to come in. Things were still a little thrown off. We hear in other prophets that the people still aren't living the way that God has asked them to live. But yet there's still something in the midst of that. We look at our own lives, our lives today. What has changed in the last 20 years? Just yesterday, we remember. Brady and I woke up yesterday morning. She was heading out and I was heading out. And all she said to me when we were in the kitchen getting our coffee together, she said, where were you? <laughs> I was just in the bathroom shaving. <laughs> what are you talking about? She goes, no, where were you 20 years ago? Third period, Mr. Weber's Algebra 1 class. We all remember that. Has the world become more or less normal? What is normal? in those 20 years. We look at today and there's so much good news about this raging pandemic. We're seeing really good effectiveness from vaccines and that masks really work and all this really good stuff that last year we said, oh my God, we're never gonna get out of this thing. We're done. What are we gonna do? Now we have hope, but now they tell us there's Delta and Mu. And I feel bad for Greek people because we keep using their letters. When is things going to get back to normal, we want to know. But was our world really ever normal? Were our lives ever really normal? No. So, what is it we can do? What is it we absolutely can know? It's the same thing that the Israelites knew. They knew God. They knew God's ways. They knew that God was the center of their life, that God gave them life, that God gave them a name and meaning and purpose and commissioned them to be a special holy people for the world. They knew that. Whether the Romans or the Persians or the Babylonians or some guy named Phil marched into Jerusalem, they knew God. And that's what we know. That's what we know. A lot of things are still shaky. A lot of things are up in the air. We're fighting and arguing about all sorts of different things today. But we have to ground ourselves back to the center of the truth of our lives, what we absolutely know. And that is the presence of our God in Jesus. That's what we know. We know that's true. We know this is not the world that God designed. We know that this is not the best we can even do. We know this is not the end of God's story. We know there's more. We believe in the promise revealed to us in Scripture. We hold that as our faith. And it helps us to know that whatever's going on around, we have something central. And at various moments in our lives, just like this moment today, we can give a great shout. Woohoo! Woo Amen. Friends, let's stand and join our voices together for our final song.
allow me to offer grace for our meal so we can head right over and uh, get to the food. We're Presbyterians. We have to eat every 15 minutes or else we like pass out. So let's pray. God, we are grateful for this day. We're grateful for the gifts that you give to us. We are grateful especially for these gifts of the earth that give nourishment to our bodies and refreshment to our souls. God, may they, be, may they bless us to continue to be a blessing in this world. God, bless our time after worship here with joy and with fellowship. May our worship continue even in our times of laughter and joy and games and activities. God, we ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. No storm can shake my inmost calm while to that rock I am clinging. Come what will, whatever the storm of life looks like, however things are moving around and going, we hold on to the truth revealed in our God in Jesus Christ. Things are changing. Things will always change. Things are never normal. But just like the Israelites, we can hold on because we know the truth of our God. And we can, this day and each day, give a great shout. Woohoo! Woo Amen.